Elon that Musk's horse be... is that in the future owning a car will be like owning a robot horse. Right. Right. <laughs> you just get on your I would your Boston that. Dynamics so cool. dog and roll into town. You get your cowboy hat on. That'd be pretty bad. And you don't have to deal with all the annoying, you know, horse stuff like feeding I, it. It's just a robot. He's just an AI machine. Yeah. That's why I get upset like at Alexa. Mm-hmm. Now everybody's Alexa's going off on, right. yeah. on the podcast. <laughs> but job. like uh you know, they're they're yeah. injecting Alexa, this. Subscribe to Dur or Die <laughs> yeah. Porsche <Subscribe> podcast. <laughs> Yeah, I am uh, gonna get the bullet Mustang. Or... Oh, mm. don't buy the bullet Mustang. I'm not gonna buy a bullet Mustang. That it's... was just a little tease for the beginning of the Dur or Die Porsche podcast. My name is John Polnick, uh, your host, along with my partner. You already heard him; he's talking Hello. already. Dwayne Good Wick. Evening. How you doing, Dwayne Wick? I'm doing very well, JP. Thank you for asking. It um, is our don't night. buy a car that just. Like I remember the Eddie Bauer edition of mm-hmm. the Ford Explorer, mm. Exploder, mm. right? Yeah, I thought that was ridiculous. Yeah, and now it's commonplace to have a vehicle with some sort of like, you know, silly add-on thing that you pay. Yeah, the American brand really got into that. They yeah. they had the uh, the North Face Avalanche. What the Chevy Avalanche? Oh, remember that car? Oh no! Yeah, they I had a North Face a version of that. They had a. Uh, Nautica version mm-hmm. of the, uh, what was the Mercury, Mercury version? Villager. Was it the Villager? No. Oh, what for was, Minecraft? No. They had, what was Nautica, they had a Nautica Mercury Villager. They had a Fila Ford Thunderbird. Ford Thunderbird. What, what was the, what was the uh, Explorer version? The Mercury version of the Explorer. That wasn't the Villager. Mountaineer. Was it the Mountaineer? Yeah. They had, they oh, had a Nautica cross- version of that. Oh, Nautica. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm. So that, that was like big in the nineties, wasn't it? And early aughts. But it's turned into a thing now. Like you have the the bullet. Uh, the bullet Mustang. Mustang. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which and you've got a Mustang that's an actually kind of like if I was going to do a Mustang, but, uh, you know, that's not happening. Can you buy the bullet edition of the Mustang SUV? That's what I want to know. Of the, oh, of the, you mean of the crossover <laughs> the new, EV yeah. Mustang? Do they have a bullet version of that? I, they you should. Know, they because probably they've jumped will. the shark already. So yeah, why not? I mean, like, come on. I think they should, totally should. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you know, I mean, we mentioned EVs and we mentioned the evolution of of vehicles and cross branding and stuff like that. I think the ultimate in cross brand, um, or I don't know if it's, it's not really a cross brand. I mean, this thing that Porsche came out with this week, uh, everyone's talking about the yeah. uh, off road 911. Never what is that called? Completely more disinterested in a Porsche product than I have. And I can't tell you why. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I've shunned all media from seeing this thing. And it's, it looked, I mean, the one clip that I saw mm-hmm. looks like it'd be an absolute blast to drive around. Yeah. But I know it's 300 grand. And I know it's, not something I'm going to like, hey, I'm going to tell my wife, I'm going to go take my $300,000 Porsche off-road vehicle and go hit the dunes. That's like not going to happen. Yeah. Right. So I don't, why does it exist? Like who's driving this thing? Well, it's, it's like even in the air-cooled world, this whole, you know, the, the, the safari version of 911s that everyone's mm-hmm. into, um, you know, I, we, on my other podcast on Bid Nerds, check it out on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe and like over there. Uh, and hey, by the way, subscribe and like this show. Yeah. Uh, because that does help a lot. We're trying to get to, I'm not going to say the number. I'm not going to say the number. Mental I'm not will, doing it. We're trying will, to get more subscribers. He'll get his surgery if if, if you subscribe. That's right. So please That's subscribe right. and, and we can afford If you're wondering who uh, Mental is, for... Mental's our producer tonight. He's yep. uh, hitting the switcher buttons over there. Lower Thanks, Mental. Uh, hit his uh, his podcast, Everyone Racers. Check that out yeah. as well. Um, now, look, the off-road thing, the rally Porsches or the safari Porsches or whatever, um, I really enjoy that. I mean, like... Mm-hmm. Have you driven a safari air cooled car? Um, I have, but never really? off road. Like oh, I okay. actually, you know, it's yeah. I've gotten to drive them around, and it's pretty cool. Usually, they make you show like the the millionaire club uh, <laughs> gold <laughs> right. card that you have in your wallet or whatever. I, like th- here, there are like we've been reviewing a few of them on Bid Nerds over the last uh, you know year or so. Mm-hmm. Um, and What's they kind come of the up, average price that they you know they're all at least a hundred grand. Yeah, uh, but you know, I mean, air cooled nine elevens. 
typically are in that nearly a hundred grand range anyway. Sure. So then you start adding all the bits. So the, the, you know, the, the, the cheap side is around a hundred thousand bucks, but some people are going 150, even 200,000, depending on, and, and more, I mean like Kelly Moss, uh, yeah. there what in those uh, Wisconsin, those things are, you know, at least they're up there. They're at least a couple hundred grand. Does Lee they're Keens make He's still making them. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of different people that are making them. Um, and it's just, you know, most of them are so darn nice. Like you said, it's like no one's ever really going to take them in the dirt. There's been a couple that we've seen on Bring a Trailer and Cars and Bids and Car Market or whatever mm-hmm. that look like, okay, those you could actually use. Um, and remember the Singer Safari? Did Singer do a Safari? Yeah, I don't they remember They did a that. Safari. It was uh, kind of done with uh, Tut Hill. Okay. Am I, I saying know. that right? It's just, uh, but I mean, that's, tuner, I mean, who's going to take a tuner. singer and beat the living daylights out of it? You know, the three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, whatever, whatever the new one is. This what? What's the new the, one called? The DLS um, or the? No, the no, turbo not the singer. The study. The, oh. the 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 Porsche. The nine nine two. That's what is that even called? The, it's thing. the Dakar. The Dakar. Okay, that's a pretty cool name. Yeah, I mean that's that makes cool sense, name. right? Yeah. Um, you know, the they guy have that, the history. They could pull it off. I mean, there there's a reason to do this. I mean, they're taking advantage of the of the trend yeah. but they're also tapping into their heritage but I, yeah i is I this going to be at the dealership are we going to be able to walk in and see this or is this going to be like hey just another one of those bought, weird porsche one off or you know something that they just cash in on it's like the 959 or something where yeah. 100 people across the world or like uh lamborghini just coming out with their new new countach which is basically isn't that just an, a is it a huracan of some sort with is extra it? badging i don't even know they made like a hundred of them. I mean, it's like, it again, cool. you're right. It it's cool. who cares cool. when, if you have that kind of money, um, that's not going to be your only car, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the kind of thing that someone buys like a, like our friends at God and Porsche of Las Vegas, Gary, the owner of uh, God and Porsche, you mm-hmm. know, great guy. Uh, and he's a collector, of, but that it's going to be guys like him. that are going to get the car. The car is going to, he's going to get it. He's going to drive around once or twice. And it's going to go in the warehouse next to his speedster 992 next to his, you know, yeah, it's uh, a, career it's a classic next to his 911. Point. Are next to all these cars that have a hundred or two hundred miles on them, uh, mm-hmm. that are amazing vehicles that should be driven. But just let's face it, they're they're not. It's sad, yeah. but that's that's who's going to get these cars because it's going to be an instant collectible car. Um, you know, why don't they make a Macan Dakar? That sounds yeah, interesting. That's... You know, on a platform. So what what is the Dakar based on? It's the nine nine two. It's a nine nine two, right? Yeah. I mean, I've only seen a couple of pictures of it. I didn't read any of the articles and watching the mm-hmm. videos like you. I just, I don't care. I don't care. It's neat. Yeah, cool. because it's, it is the most impractical thing that you can buy. Really? I mean, I, I don't or maybe know. Maybe you can't even buy it. I don't know. Well, yeah. Really I mean, that's know. the thing. It's like no world. one will be able to get one. It's like yeah. a G, it's anytime something. I mean, it's hard enough to get like everyone's clamoring to get the new GT3 RS. Like yeah. no one can get a GT3 RS. Each dealership's going to get one or two. Most of the dealers hate that cars like this exist because all their best customers go in there and, and say, oh, I want one. And then they're disappointed and they yeah. got to disappoint their best customers. That sucks. So right? then they sell them a 992 Turbo. Right. Which I is mean, a pretty good car. I think if you want to do that type of thing, you could easily get a 997 and build it and do all kinds of stuff. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the idea in general. You like the idea because it's a it's kind of a disruptor, like yeah, the, within the luxury car world, or I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's really a disrupt a disrupt the disruptor mm-hmm. in the in the sense of the word like you know it just when we think of a disruptor we're talking about things like you know blockchain Bitcoin is a disruptor in the monetary world yeah, yeah. but you said something really interesting earlier which was the there's nowhere to go in terms of disrupting our our hobby yeah on, automotive on, enthusiasm on, yeah on the streets yeah electric we already we've talked that to death mm-hmm. that's kind of the next step and then full automation it's, right it's like straight out of uh what was it minority report where he sure. gets on the little pod and goes down the thing and they're everything's controlled yeah you said off-road it's the last frontier it's like you know that's that's the one place that you'll be able to actually drive a car the even yeah. yeah so it's like uh elon musk or jay leno i don't know which one of them mm-hmm. said it but one of them you know call it 10 years ago said in 20 years uh owning a car will be like owning a horse today right only yeah. true enthusiasts will do it and you'll have to have 
means to do it because owning a horse is not inexpensive right Did that's an see, expensive thing there was a, a piece of real estate that the guy built his own track in like texas so it was, it was a pretty nice house yeah. but it had a full like racetrack yeah you know i always hear about people you know like we have that amazing racetrack here in las vegas uh you know was it uh spring, spring mountain, mountain right yeah. and it's they're talking about making it as long as the nurburgring and all this kind of cool stuff and it's it's an amazing they are? yeah it, it's Good like it, it's a it's really awesome out there. I know mental spent a lot of time out there. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it's like, it's a multi, multi, multi million dollar project in years and all this work. It's like, well, why couldn't you just like get some desert and get some guy that paves driveways and, and make a racetrack? It just doesn't seem <laughs> that hard to me. Do you pay I mean, driveways? Okay, what's that? Yeah. I mean, so yeah, I think, I think in the future, uh, you know, those people that will own cars, it's like those guys, they'll, they'll be, these cars will be either things in museums to look at, or you'll be really, really wealthy yeah. and be able to, you know, be a gentleman racer and be on the racetrack. And I mean, like being a member out there at Spring Mountain is 75 grand or something like that, or you go thermal, all these yeah, places. It's, it's just like horses are today. Yeah. I mean, it incredibly you, expensive, mm -hmm. but the average Joe uh, could still drive off road. If in the future, everything is automated and it's all AI and, and your car in order to drive into the city has to, you know, maybe you can self drive in the suburbs the... or out in the, out in the middle of nowhere. But as soon as you get any kind of urban area, the car is going to connect to the grid and it's going to do its own thing mm -hmm. uh, at best. Right. And, and really the likelihood of it's, transportation in the morning is taxed out of it or something. Yeah. You'll just hail a box. It's just, mm. you're not going to own a car. Ooh, I like in that. Hail years. a box. I mean, that's Let's do a startup. That's what it's going to be. Right. <laughs> it's going to be, you're going to either have, there too? You're going to have the membership to Bugatti where you mm -hmm. get a really fancy box that comes and gets you when you need transportation, or you're right. going to be like your Nissan box and it's going to get there and it's going to have, you know, some kids Cheerios left all over the seats. <laughs> um, so, okay. you know, I mean, you look at even now, I mean, driving a car isn't an inexpensive thing. Mm -hmm. Even, even if you don't go to the racetrack, if you wanted to, you know, a sports car or whatever, and modding your car is not an inexpensive hobby. We always say take up heroin. It's cheaper. Um, right. But, you know, Don't look how both. many people are into those Razor scooters. We're here in Vegas out in the desert. You mm -hmm. see these guys off road all the time. Right. Yeah, you don't have to have a huge, license. huge hobby. And those things have are quite expensive. I mean, they're yeah. they are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But but they're not like you can get they can be had. You can get mm -hmm. an inexpensive off road vehicle relatively. Yeah, I mean, you a, brand buy a new, used one for 16 grand or something like that. And I think even less but than then you I need a trailer. Think, yeah. Well, I mean, but if you live on the edge, stay. if you live somewhere near, you can just drive it out to the desert or whatever. But yeah. okay. So let's say, let's say, let's say you do need a trailer and you need, you need somewhere to get it out there, whatever. The point is, is as these urban cores expand and the grid expands and autonomous, only autonomous vehicles are allowed on the grid. Uh, the people that will be able to be automotive enthusiasts are going to keep getting pushed to the fringe, mm -hmm. like literally and figuratively, right? So out there on the edge. Uh, so those people that can still get gasoline or maybe they'll start making electric EVs. Um, you'll be able to go out and rip up in the dirt because there's not going to be a grid out there. You're not going to be worried about traffic and, you know, all that kind of or stuff. Or the AI is going to be so smart that it'll be able to determine a tumbleweed versus a canyon drop off right you know and it'll be able to navigate your way for you so i mean that, well, that and what could, fun is that right i mean it's, it's not like, so yeah it, it's it's automotive enthusiasts possible. don't want to be a passenger that's the mm -hmm. whole point of being an enthusiast is operating the vehicle whatever that is whether it's a car or a buggy motorcycle whatever you want that freedom cars automobiles have always been about freedom mm -hmm. and there's just going to be less and less of that just that's just the way it's going and no one will care yeah all <laughs> right you'll eat bugs um you'll own nothing and be happy about it uh, <laughs> as long as you have your TikTok. right exactly uh so i don't know i i think that it, this whole getting in your car and driving wherever you want that's on its way out i mean or, or do you think am i wrong do you think that there's well, a future I, where people are going to be driving around on their own I don't. I don't see that. I mean, even I look at my children and mm -hmm. I, I look at what they're capable of in terms of computers and where computers are going. I just don't see it happening where it's not fully automated, at least yeah. in the city. Yeah. And then most freeways. So you'll be able to drive to L.A. fully automated. You know, I'll, I'll be 
a grandpa and i'm sure that will happen in my lifetime oh for sure yeah so i, I mean, mean we're less than decades away for a lot of this the, the, oh yeah from my understanding and i'm no expert by any means but we've had ali uh on the show in the past and uh kelly mm-hmm. smith and a lot of really smart people uh you know their take is like look uh you know, like Ali is in that business, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, look, the only reason these, ca- there's two reasons why the cars can't be fully autom- uh, autonomous right now. He's like, the, the technology is there. Like the cars can do it. The problem is, is that uh, the amount of processing power that it takes for a car to be fully autonomous um, eats up too much battery life. Hmm. So interesting, you know, people talk about, you know, range in, in EVs. That's always the big problem, you know, range anxiety, mm-hmm. uh, in the typical car can do what two, 300 miles somewhere in the neighborhood, you know, whether it's a Tesla or Porsche or whatever. Yeah. Um, but if it's autonomous, the, the brain of that, that AI sucks up so much processing power and that mm-hmm. just sucks up a lot of energy. So the, the range is literally dropped down to a quarter. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's that big, right? It's that, that, that makes big perfect a sense. I actually didn't think about that, right? but yeah, I mean that, that, so until there's a major leap in battery technology, uh, we're going to have a limit on the processing power. Now Could we get is, like recently huh? deceased brains and put them in a jar and just like hook up. Yeah. Yeah. I, and that's, stuff they and... just go to, they collect uh, third world children's brains, oh, wow. uh, and just sync them all up <laughs> and, uh, make it work that way. Um, yeah. Any, anything that's going to work well, is going to be evil in the background. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, there's also the talk of like, if there was, there's, two, there's one thing, there's two different things that could fix that problem. One would be an increase, uh, you know, like a major leap in, um, computing technology, power, processing and, power. Mm-hmm. And that could mean, uh, offloading the processing to, to the edge. Like right now, um, you know, I, in, when you start talking about internet of things, uh, you know, you've got, uh, you've got where computers, it used to be that, uh, you'd have a computer and it would do all the processing. Yeah, everything had to be local, right? Like you had to have memory on the physical board. Now it's being processed in the cloud. Right. Right. So if you have connectivity and you put a computer that has a lot of processing power, but can also send data to a cloud date, the, 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 uh, the information is analyzed there and then sent back to mm-hmm. the edge computer and that edge computer can react, well, there's something there. But connectivity is one of those things that's hard to, to maintain constant connectivity. And let's face it, in a car, a split second of uh, a lot lock, losing that connectivity, yeah. it, it, the processing You're power, staying on the road. that's a big problem, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you, it could be the difference. Well, that's why they should make the old electrical lines that the trains were connected to. Yeah, in like Seattle, the buses are like that. Yeah, still, in downtown right. Seattle. The guy has the to get wires. out and like swing the yeah. thing over. Yeah. So if you have if you have edge computing uh, in the computers, maybe the processing power, you know, or some leap in processing uh, technology that allows the computers to think faster and more efficiently, which, of course, is where everything's going. But that takes time. Same thing with the with the uh, with the power thing. Now, the other thing that's keeping this from happening um, is the legality back pushback. What's that? I was going to say pushback from people who just don't want to go there but you're right there's a there's an entire legal there's an issue when it comes to like all law is based on someone's perception of morality when mm-hmm. it comes down to it right so um if here okay let, let's it's the talk Ten about commandments it. okay <laughs> it so is the it's first a, four laws does jesus like this car or not that's the big question God. that's yep. really the thing that's holding it back um or Muhammad or whoever you're into. Um, I'll give you an example of how, of, 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 of something. And this is, wasn't my, this is, I I remember the first time I heard about this was on like a Rogan episode years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was a episode where they were talking about artificial intelligence and this exact thing. Right. And it really kind of blew my mind. The idea that, okay, if you have an autonomous vehicle, let's say there are three autonomous vehicles on the road. Oh, is this like the old train track thing where yes, they kill precisely. somebody? Okay. The computer can make a decision. Mm-hmm. There's some there's some kind of accident is foreseen. Let's say, uh, I don't know, a tree falls in front of the road and it's unavoidable. This accident is going to happen. The computer can decide whether or not to kill you 
the driver or you, the passenger of your car. Mm -hmm. The passenger, the Versus car next to you. saving a bus full of babies. Bus full of kids. Yeah, or whatever. Okay, yeah. but there's more to it than that. Or the car to the right of you, uh, the passenger is a, a diplomat. A diplomat mm -hmm. or a CEO to a big company that employs thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. He makes the software. That Correct, right? <laughs> so no human being could process all this information and make that decision, but the computers can. And mm -hmm. in a connected world, they're talking to one another. So the computer- Your fate was decided in a nanosecond. Right. And it, But those decisions have to be made for the computer. The computer mm -hmm. cannot- make the ethical decision on its own without having uh without having those eth like an ethical hierarchy built into right. it can't do it like, that's just not what ai does and who it decides that hierarchy create, it can't it can't come up with values um so in that yes. situation <laughs> well i mean sure it could just say oh the value is we don't want to destroy our computer brain so we're going to want all the humans and uh <laughs> you know the you know there it is, Terminators. Uh, what do you guys think of that? Uh, we're going to talk, I don't know, Rental's waving at us. We're going to come back in just a second. Hey guys, I'm super excited to tell you about our sponsor, Guys Customs. That's Guys, G-Y-X underscore customs. That's how you spell it, Guys Customs bracelets. These things are amazing. Check them out. They're handmade in America, custom bracelets made to match your watch or your car. These things are unbelievable. I have three or four of them myself. My partner, Michael Deeb, has a bunch of them. Uh, they're pretty addictive once you get one. Each one of them are bespoke. We're talking, uh, we're talking carbon fiber. We're talking titanium. We're talking stainless steel glass. There's none of this cheap Chinese garbage that you see a lot of bracelets being made out there. These ones are super high quality. They're made right here in America. When you go to guys, Guys Customs on Instagram. It's about the only place that you can order one of these. Uh, when you DM the artist, you're actually reaching the real artist when you DM Guys Customs at Instagram. Uh, and she will make you a bracelet made to match that special watch that special car or that special person that has a special watch or a special car and they want something really, really cool uh, in their life. These are the, they make the most amazing gifts. Um, I get compliments on mine all the time. Everywhere I go, people are like, wow, that's really cool. You can see in the pictures, uh, you know, these beads, the, the colored beads are PTS. They're paint to sample. So if you have a specific color code for your car, she'll have beads made that are specifically painted to match your car or your watch. It's unbelievable. You got to get one of these guys, customs, bracelets, check them out. They support us. Uh, and we really, really, really want to support them. Guys, customs, bracelet. Welcome back to the dirt or die Porsche podcast. We're talking AI disruptors within automotive enthusiasm. Uh, I was thinking like, what about water? Because you were talking about off-road, mm -hmm. maybe the ocean is like the final frontier in terms of like freedom of driving. Like you could take your your Lotus Esprit Turbo, jump it off the uh, the dock, dive right into the ocean. The fins come out, and you're James Bonding it underwater. Is that the last frontier for for freedom of driving? I don't know if, and I think this is where we're going to need the audience's input on this one. Is boating driving? Do you drive a boat? You do. You or pilot do you a boat. Pilot a boat, or you, is it? I mean, look, I like boating. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong. In fact, um, some of the biggest auto enthusiasts that I know prefer boating. Yeah. Um, I have a friend of mine up in Seattle. He's a huge collector. His collection is, you know, every car in his huge warehouse is just a banger. Every one of them is something amazing. Um, he doesn't just have GT3s. He has like you know, 997 GT3 4.0. He gets, you know, a 993 uh, Turbo S. He's mm -hmm. that guy, right? Nice. Um, and he, he's is said he to me many rapper? times. What's that? Is he a famous rapper? Uh, he is not a famous okay. rapper, but I know the mm -hmm. who you're referring to. He is not a boater. Uh, mm. He's into ham radios. We're talking about Mix a lot. A very good friend of mine. You can see him on 
one of the episodes. Porsche of Road show. Trip. Porsche Road Trip, yeah. Which is not on. I Pluto didn't know he's into ham radios. No, Porsche Road Trip uh, y- No, you can't even see it there because that those would uh, take you to Pluto. So uh, Porsche Road Trip is going to be coming to YouTube. We're going to put it up on uh, the Defrostination site. Uh, That's great. Uh, we're going to re- we're going to call it uh, Cars Unknown. So it used to be Porsche Road Trip. We're going to bring it back to its original name. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to call it Cars Unknown. I, we're I like that name. Episodes. Do you? Yeah. I yeah. Do. I, I like that one over the the one that. We was, called it Porsche Road Trip because that's what the distributor wanted. That's what that's, that's Adam Carolla's people wanted. No, no, no. Yeah. But he's he's right. We will no longer refer to it. We will not dead name it. Should we just start calling it Cars Unknown from here mm-hmm. on? That's probably a good Absolutely. idea. Yeah. I should probably update all the socials for that. Uh, but yeah, when you when you own a boat, it's even more ridiculous than people with personalized personalized license plates. Mm-hmm. Like everybody who owns a boat has to have their own little name <laughs> on the back of the boat. That's true. So that's a little bit annoying, but. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, ocean is kind of the last freedom frontier, possibly. I love sure. boating. Yeah. Grew up water skiing. You grew up on a lake. Yep. I mean, there's a freedom that you get when you're out there on the water. Yeah. So maybe that is, you know, one of the but last things that it's they'll like, I don't assimilate. Know. It's sure. But it, but it is so different from automobile. Like piloting mm-hmm. a boat or driving a boat is just. It's just a completely different thing. It's like saying, uh, you know, driving a car is like, like driving an air, or snow flying an airplane. Versus like, they're both fun. Yeah, it's not diminishing boating by saying that they're different. It's just they are different. And uh, so I'll qualify the statement and say that the last uh, frontier for automotive enthusiasm on land is going to be off road. Sure. Uh, and we can have a discussion about boats some other time, but. Um, yeah, I, I think that, uh, that you know, if you live out in a farmland, out in the flyover state or something like that, uh, your, your, your old pickup truck, you can drive it around the farm. That's going to be a thing you'll still be able to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as soon, but you, you'll be restricted. Maybe you can drive that truck into town, but then at some point in town, you're going to have to pull over and then get into a box. Uh, mm-hmm. If you want to go deeper into whatever, or maybe they'll have zones where you can drive. I, I don't know. You I mean, there's these guys so that much have, stuff that they got to figure out. Like the the YouTube farms that are just a playland of automotive, whatever. They, they're building cars. They're, you know, creating one-off hot rods and then driving it around the farm and just having a blast. Yeah. So maybe it'll be a little bit more like that. Like yeah, you'll I'm, have to live in a a rural environment if you're an enthusiast. Yeah. I mean, yeah, at some point. Mm -hmm. So like the big question is how soon does all this stuff happen? Is this something that happens in the next five years, 10, you know, I mean, if you look at what it's so hard, we we thought we were going to have flying cars by the time, you know, 2015 rolled around or even 1999. Like Uh, really back when we were kids. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like in 1980, if you would have asked, we were promised jetpacks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we well, have you seen jetpacks lately? Yeah. Have you jet seen packs jet are packs? Along. That ish I mean, is coming. It's like Boston Dynamics and the robots and all that stuff. <laughs> I mean, there we are. Those things are here, mm-hmm. uh, and those things are going to happen very fast. The question is, it's like, will the average person be able to get a jetpack? I mean, the. You know, I just thought of something. Yeah. We should be able to ride the the Boston Dynamics dog. Why don't they turn that into like a mount? Where you like Elon Musk's horse be... is in the future owning a car will be like owning a robot horse. Right. Right. <laughs> you just get on your I would your Boston that. Dynamics so cool. dog and roll into town. You get your cowboy hat on, that'd be pretty bad. And you don't have to deal with all the annoying, you know, horse stuff like feeding I, it and man, rushing I it. I don't know. And... Like you see all these videos and it's just like, oh my God, humanity's done. But you see like there's so many great videos out there. there. Have you seen the one where the where the soldier and this is a it's not a real Boston Dynamic video, but somebody made like a fake yeah, one yeah. where they're training the robot to shoot things and they're abusing it and they're being mean to it and then they tell it to shoot the robot dog. Mm-hmm. And have you guys seen this? And then <laughs> yeah. so he like shoots them and takes off with the dog and runs away. Uh, you know, whenever I see the robot dog, I instantly go into like. It's crazy how much, like you attach, humanity, you pro- like yeah, project into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when they abuse the robots, how you like you get sympathy for it. It's do you remember? It's like C three PO. Like C three PO, I appreciate Han Solo. 
because he knows C-3PO is a robot. Yeah. And he treats him as such. Yeah. Whereas the other characters are like, oh, you okay, C-3PO? And they have sympathy. And I'm like, it's just a robot. He's just an AI machine. Yeah. That's why I get upset like at Alexa. Mm-hmm. Now everybody's Alexa's going off on, yeah, right. yeah. on the podcast. Good but job. like, uh, you know, they're, they're yeah. injecting Alexa, this. Subscribe to Dur or Die <laughs> yeah. Porsche subscribe podcast. podcast. <laughs> people are, you know, they keep adding these little, you know, things to make her feel more human like yeah and i'm i'm always like shut up or you know stop yeah, talking being, or being rude to her and yeah. now like siri will come back and say that's rude or i i don't yeah. yeah well okay the best commercial of all time a lot of great television commercials out there and mm-hmm. you probably remember this commercial um i don't know if you know this or not uh i is it cans or con or i don't know how to pronounce it's can can all right mm-hmm. so the can film festival everyone knows the can film festival but there's also a can uh there's the can awards for commercials there's a there's a festival for just for advertising content for commercials yeah. right so the award for best commercial award. one of the best commercials of all time probably circa 2000 maybe maybe late 90s was for ikea and remember mm. they always had their little lamp that was kind of like their big thing kind of like the mm. pixar lamp Mm-mm. There's a commercial, I'll classic commercial. You'll look this up, okay. look it up on the internet. I, we would show you on here, but you know, the commercial is there's one of these little Pixar type lamps in an apartment and it's right by the window. And there's a woman, it, it, the whole commercial is kind of mostly from the POV of the lamp, right? Mm. So the lamp is sitting there in the, in the apartment and the woman comes over and she likes, looks at the lamp. She's like, Oh, And she like pets the lamp and turns it off for the night. Then Mm -hmm. she gets up the next morning and it's like this whole, it's very, it's very romantic music. And it's very, you know, the, the, the woman who lives in this apartment loves this lamp. Then she (laughs) unplugs it, (laughs) picks it up. She holds it in her, her arms, swaddling it almost like a baby. Right. Mm -hmm. And she walks out of the apartment as she's walking out of the apartment. They go to a POV shot of the lamp looking over sh- over her shoulder, kind of like a baby's a baby. point of view, right? Right. And you see the apartment getting smaller as they go through the door. Mm-hmm. Cut to street. You can see it's a city street, urban street, like maybe New York or something like that. Mm-hmm. On the curb, there's a pile of garbage. You see up in the in the window where the lamp was. And the, the lady who owns the lamp drops the lamp onto the side of the road OMG. next to the bag of garbage. Okay. And now wow. the lamp is sitting there next to the bags of garbage. It's like Toy Story when the kind of like Toy Story. cowboy Cut girl to, gets thrown away. Then you see so from, from the curb, it's now raining. You see up in the window and the lady puts a new lamp in the window, turns it on and mm-hmm. swat, gives it the same little kind of loving brush. And it's all from the point of view of this lamp. And they do this slow dolly to the lamp and the rain is coming down. And you're just like, by this point, you're just like, you got to cry. You got to be like, this poor <laughs> And then that guy, remember with the accent from the from the Ikea commercials? Remember from the 80s? The, the, the I can't believe it's not butter guy. No, he was the guy in the <laughs> Ikea commercials. He had the heavy, like, you know, Scandinavian accent. He's like, he pops into the frame. He's like, what is wrong with you? It's just a lamp. It has no feelings. I can't believe I've never seen this. Get a new one. <laughs> and he pops out. And it's like, I can't. it's like the best commercial. Eat more chicken. Buy more lamps. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. I love that commercial. Um, uh, I'll be looking at Machines don't That's... have feelings. They're just machines. <laughs> AI. Fish don't either. Fish at don't this have point, feelings. I don't know about the fish thing, but, uh, but uh, you know, machines, uh, even with, I, I think the thing about artificial intelligence in it can mimic feelings. It can mimic all these things, but can it really, will it ever be? I don't know. I'm not a, obviously I'm not an engineer. I'll never, but that kind of stuff is coming. And there's been lots of movies about stuff like, you know, AI and all the ex machina and all these types of things that really kind of push those limits intellectually. And it's like, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think there will ever be an uh, sentient artificial intelligence? Will the machine ever? I think it's like time travel. I don't think it's possible. Yeah. I think there there is something that will be created that will fool 99% of the people 
on Earth. Yeah. It'll be really good at what it does, but it won't be sentient. I it mean, bots can know. already fool people. Yeah, I mean, bots. Yeah. What's weird about bots, maybe I've said this before, is that you you can tell it's a bot by just asking it questions. It's yeah. worthless without input. Yeah. We are talking about this earlier. Like, it only knows what it knows about you or how to manipulate you by what it's been given as an input. Yeah. So therefore, if you don't give it any input, if you just keep asking it questions, it reveals itself as something that just wants to ask you questions. Yeah. It never really tells you something. But if you talk to people, people mostly want to talk. They don't really want to listen all that much. That's the difference. Yeah. So, I mean, would you, what do you think of the idea of having a, a car that has, you know, Michael Knight? kit in it mm. you know where mm -hmm. it's uh, you know this car is talking to you and having I, a conversation having a relationship at some point i don't think <clears> that'll <throat> come because you remember was it beverly hills cop where the the <laughs> early car was talking he's like it was annoying eddie murphy you know like your, your door, door is, is a jar. jar was that beverly hills cop? no that was his album that was a uh, eddie murphy comedian Oh, he, when he was like talking Delirious about like if people had a car in the hood, it, it would be swearing at you. It's like <laughs> the white car says your door is a jar. Right. Close your door, mother. Yeah, whatever. I can't. Right, right, right. Yeah. No, <laughs> classic uh, Eddie Murphy stuff. It'll I be like know. that. Like you'll be annoyed yeah. by the even the door chimes or like yeah. the seatbelt chimes. That's the first thing that people want to do is to rip those things out. So yeah. I would be destroying my my Alexa. Well, can you you can get an Alexa in your car That's now, true. right? You can. Yeah. yeah. I, and I don't, I've never been, I, I can't think of a car that honestly, that's the worst thing about most EV drivers is all they want to do when you get in the car is show you that stupid, uh, user the interface and it's like, yeah. Oh God. Um, but that's where it's coming. I mean, if you've been to a, a car show, not like a car enthusiast show, but like an international auto show, it's, it's all about the gizmos in there. And I can mm -hmm. only imagine, I think um, we're going to see a, a slight resurgence back to mm -hmm. analog, not analog looking. Mm -hmm. uh dials and gauges and stuff and whoever does that is first to market in a, in a cool car mm -hmm. will sell a lot of those yeah i yeah i hope so yeah <laughs> but that'll be it you know it's like how many more generations of self-driving yeah, cars do we have uh has the last generation of car enthusiasts been born is there still another generation to be had i i man i mean what generation are we in now right zed Jed, gen something like that uh, TikTok gen now yeah, TikTok gen. Is that what it is? I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think? Or is is AI just not going to happen? Is it way off in the future? Are self-driving mm -hmm. autonomous cars not going to happen? Is this just like, uh, is this just a conspiracy theory? Are we going to keep, be able, do you think you'll still be able to drive your old 911 uh, to cars and coffee in five years, 10 years, 20 years? I mean, forget the AI and the autonomous thing the availability of gasoline, mm -hmm. whether or not there is any, or they allow us to buy it anymore. Uh, those are things that all, are also really up in the air and something right. that is the, the, the sort of, like I like to say, the sort of Damocles over the uh, ice engine, over the ice cars. Yes. Um, you know, so there's a lot of, I think there are a lot of, a lot of forces working against our, uh, our beloved, car enthusiasm mm -hmm. uh world and uh i think we should enjoy it while we can yep that's uh, the bottom plan line accordingly honestly. yep <laughs> um, en enjoy enjoy the now yeah um mm -hmm. and that's good advice no matter what uh guys we hope you enjoy the show make sure you hit the subscribe like and notification button if you haven't already i know we remind you guys all the time and i hate kind of pestering about it but uh we really do enjoy making the show for you guys uh, so it helps us out if you just hit that button uh, and we can keep making more. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got some goals for the show uh, by the end of the year. Hopefully we'll get a, you know, 20,000, you know, 20,000 we're, we're uh, subscribers. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a very multi X increase. Could uh, happen from where we're at. Yeah, I think um, I'm an optimist. Something big would happen. Maybe we can get some bots to get us some more. Yes. Let's get AI to help us out yeah. in some way. Good plan. Mental, anything you want to say before we get out of here? That's uh, that's a negative, guys. We will see you next time on Dura Die Porsche Podcast. Thanks, Dwayne. See you. Thank you.